and welcome to Clash Sparring. Clash Sparring is a new and exciting format for point sparring that will be launched at this year's US Open for all belt levels. So if you're a point fighter, you'll definitely want to check this out because it will mean twice the fun at the US Open and beyond. Now you'll be able to compete in your regular point sparring division and your Clash Sparring division, which will occur in the exact same ring right after point sparring is completed. Clash Sparring is a new type of point sparring. Now it features the exact same rules regarding equipment, legal techniques, scoring point values, and the allowable contact. That's right, the same uniform, same foam style sparring gear, same legal targets, two point kicks, one point hand strikes, and the same light to moderate touch contact restriction. This is not light contact kickboxing, or what's known as continuous sparring. Those are great divisions, but this is a unique brand of point sparring. And here's where it gets interesting. Clash sparring, which by the way is named to describe the competitive interaction between the fighters, the clash. In clash sparring, points may be scored by either or both competitors during each clash. And fighters will get points for every technique that they score as part of a legal combination. Now when I say legal combination, three is the magic number. The duration of each clash, meaning the number of strikes that you can throw while attacking or countering, is limited to three. That's three strikes plus one disengaging strike. Uh, but I'll explain more about that later. That's right, the maximum is three in a three strike combination. And then you must break, step back, or disengage. This three strike limitation will be strictly enforced. Competitors have to self-regulate by disengaging or separating after each clash. The action is not stopped to award points. Two judges will track points on handheld counters and they'll use their totals to help to determine their vote for a winner. Success in clash sparring relies on the ability to score points or multiple points with combinations without being countered by your opponent. To engage and disengage, to score without being scored on. It's not about who scores first, but rather who scores most using attacking or countering either with individual techniques or up to three technique combinations. In many ways, clash sparring is really more similar to how we already train in our schools. Class sparring basic elements. Each match is 90 seconds running time, total points. Points may be scored by attacking and or by countering an opponent's attack. Each attack and or counter is limited to a total of three techniques per clash plus one disengaging strike. Competitors may score multiple points during each clash for successful attacking and or counter striking combinations. Every kick that scores earns two points. Every hand strike that scores earns one point. Scoring occurs only with the allowable amount of focused touch contact and focused control. Competitors are expected to separate or break after each clash and then continue sparring or re-engage. Failure to separate will result in having the referee break the fighters and may warrant penalization or disqualification. Rules regarding legal techniques and penalties are identical to those for point sparring with the following general exceptions. Hook punches and uppercuts are prohibited. Excessive contact, falling down, leaving the ring, clinching or stalling of any kind, or exceeding the maximum number of allowable strikes in a clash will result in your opponent being awarded points. The referee will control the action. Two judges will track the scoring strikes on handheld devices and select a winner. If the judge's decision results in a draw, there will be a sudden victory extension, the winner of which will be decided by the first scoring clash. Exactly what is a scoring combination? A scoring combination occurs when two or three legal techniques score in the sequence of an attack or counter. A point or points are awarded for every scoring technique that occurs in a legal combination or a clash. All right, stop. Okay, what we see here is Mr. Ruffin came in and he scored with the round kick to the body, one, two. He gets full credit for a legal scoring combination. The round kick scoring to the body got him two points. The back fist reverse punch got him two more, a total of four points. They stepped back, broke in the spirit of class sparring, moved around. Mr. Smith came in, scored with the reverse punch underneath, followed with the back leg round kick, scoring over the top, three points. Full credit for each technique thrown in a legal clash. Well done. What is counter scoring? Gentlemen, since clash sparring places a premium on the total number of scoring techniques rather than on who scores first, 
all legal scoring strikes are credited. Competitors have to defend counterattacks that occur in response to their own attack the same way they would defend their opponent's attack. All right, good job. All right, good example of counter scoring. Real good entry. He worked that front hand. Didn't, I don't know if he got credit. Judges can tell us that. But he definitely scored with a reverse punch here. Counter fighter, step back, scored with the hook kick. One point credit, two point credit. Within the clash, they step back and then they will begin to re-engage. Therein is the essence of clash sparring. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Combination attacks and combination counters are strictly limited to three techniques. Clash sparring does not allow competitors to stand in front of each other and trade shots indefinitely. You cannot win by overwhelming your opponent with size or weight or by intimidation. The skill of clash sparring is best defined as the ability to score effectively and escape untouched. Combination attacks and counters are strictly limited to three techniques. And here's the key, three techniques as defined in the following way. Regarding kicks. Okay, stop. All right, good, good. Very good example of several things. Yummy, relax, okay? One is, in clash sparring, once you lift your leg to kick, whether it's the front leg or the back leg, you may throw as many kicks as you would like within the limitation of keeping your leg up, and it still will be only counted as one technique of your three technique combination. Now notice, he threw triple round kick, followed by hook kick. Doubtlessly, the judges scored some of those. They looked clean in scoring. He would get credit for every kick that he scored in that combination. And still, because it was within the parameters of one leg lift, it only counts as one technique. So he was able to follow with the front hand and the rear hand. Following towards the end, okay, we have Nick, who threw side kick to round kick and finishing with side kick. Looked to me like the sound kick, side kick and the round kick scored. Again, according to the judges, they're clicking away. That could have given him four points. The last psychic, if it fell short, he wouldn't get credit for. But he also followed up with techniques that the judges may have given him credit for as part of a legal combination. Because once again, once you lift the knee, you can execute as many kicks as you want and get credit for everyone that scores. And it only counts as one technique of your maximum three technique combination. Well done. Regarding lead hand strikes, if executed in quick sequence, Competitors may strike twice in a row with the same lead hand technique, and it will be considered one technique. An example would be bridging the gap with double back fist. Any break in rhythm or timing or change in technique will result in each strike being considered separately. All right, stop. All right, guys, gentlemen, all right. Good demonstration. We have uh, one execution that is legal, one that is not, according to clash sparring. When Heath entered, he did double back fist with continuity. You're allowed to use the lead hand twice if you do it with an uninterrupted rhythm and break to bridge the gap. So if I'm working here, I can do double back fist. Hoo -hoo! And, and that double back fist is only going to count as one technique as long as it's done quickly in succession without a break of rhythm, no change in technique or change in direction. Then one, two, I can still do two more techniques as part of my legal three technique combination. When Nick attacked, he did back fist stop, back fist reverse punch, and another back fist. Four techniques, which would be illegal. All right, everybody see the difference there? Regarding rear hand strikes, all rear hand strikes will count as a single strike within the three technique limit. All right, good, good. All right, yummy. All right, rear hand techniques always count as a full technique in the limitation of three techniques per clash. So again, in clash sparring, each time you engage, you're limited to a maximum of a three technique combination. And in defining that, let's remember that if you lift your leg, you can kick as many times as you want and get credit for every scoring kick, and it still only counts as one technique in your three technique combination. If you're using that lead hand to enter, you can double pump it as long as you do it without a break in rhythm or in timing, don't change any targets or technique, it's still only gonna count as one technique. Every time you throw a rear hand, it fully counts as a technique in regard to the maximum of three each time you execute in a clash. What is a disengaging technique? All right, gentlemen, fight. Competitors are allowed a single disengaging strike that is not considered part of the three technique maximum for each clash combination. This strike must be executed as the competitor is creating space after a clash that is disengaging and be followed by the fighter continuing to move out of range. 
All right, good, good, good. All right, nice demonstration. Okay, relax. Now, we know that in class sparring, in each class, every fighter is limited to a maximum of three techniques in a combination. Then they must break or disengage. But the rules of class sparring allow a disengaging strike. Since class sparring awards attacking and countering, what we're doing is we're giving the attacker a tool uh, that they can use instead of just covering up or running out, they can do their three technique combination and as they disengage, which means as they create space to move out of the class, they can execute one technique as long as they're doing it as disengaging and as long as they continue to move out of range, they, they break after the disengaging technique. What we saw was, we saw Heath attack with a combination and then as soon as Nick started to attack, he stepped back, moving away, worked the defensive sidekick, continued to create space. That is allowable. Three technique maximum clash with one disengaging technique. Nick followed up, attacking with his hand, foot combination. As soon as Heath went to counter him, Nick stepped away, finished with a back fist, and continued to create space. That is a legal use of the disengaging technique which is not part of a three technique combination. Again, in class sparring, each class, maximum of three techniques as we've defined it before, plus one legal disengaging strike has to be done as you're exiting the class. Throw your strike, whether you score or not, continue to exit out, create space, start again with a new class. That's the way it works in class sparring. What is breaking? All right, gentlemen. Competitors must break or step back from their opponent after each clash. When breaking, the competitor must disengage to a distance outside of which they can touch each other. Every competitor is responsible for self-regulating the break rather than waiting for the referee to take control. Requiring the referee to take control of the breaks will likely lead to penalization or disqualification. All right, good job, guys. Good job. Okay, relax. All right, what you noticed was clash sparring is all about engaging and equally as important, disengaging. After each individual technique or up to three technique combination. The competitor is responsible to step back, to break, to move out of range of the fighter, at least to a distance where they can't touch each other. Again, because this is the art of scoring without being scored on. So you want to execute your offense, uh, uh, one technique, two techniques, up to three as we've defined it, and then immediately step out of range, be hopefully before your, uh, your, co your opposite competitor can score on you. It's each competitor's responsibility to make sure that they're breaking, stepping back, or disengaging after each clash. If you're going to rely on the referee to take control and break the fighters, it's going to lead to penalization or disqualification. All right? All right, well done. Once again, I want to welcome everybody to Clash Sparring. This is very exciting. I've taken the opportunity to consult with some of America's greatest point fighters. And let me tell you, they are all very excited and 100% behind this project. Um, if you have any questions about clash sparring, and keep in mind, this is for all ages, all ranks. It's going to be very easy because it's going to be right in your ring after your point sparring is completed. Uh, or completed. Uh, if you have any questions at all, go to the website where the complete rules are. That's usopen-karate.com. There's also a hotline where you can call and speak with someone if you have any questions at all. Um, in closing, I just want to say uh, there's a belief among the point fighters that class sparring is going to become a huge international sport that will be added to tournaments all over the world. Uh, and you know what? Years from now, when this is a mainstay division of tournaments, you're going to want to be able to say, you know what? I competed the very first time it was offered. So be sure to go to the U.S. Open website and register for class sparring now. Be a part of this exciting new trend. We'll see you at the Open. Register now at usopen-karate.com for 50% off clash sparring if you register for point sparring.